Uh, hiya, and welcome to Tights TV. Uh, today I've got a special guest on. I've got Glenn from uh, Sky Blue Fans TV joining me today. So, Glenn, it's happy to have you on, mate. Appreciate it. No worries. Glad to come and uh, speak to you about tomorrow's game. Yeah, uh, Barnsley, you know, a bit of a treacherous run, uh, I think it's fair to say at the minute. Uh, going against the Coventry side, what you know, we haven't won beer for like 90 odd years, I think, in the in league. So it's not a great track record to start with, as it stands. But uh, Coventry season up to now, um, have, have you been impressed with it, Glenn? Uh, I think you're about mid table at the minute, aren't you? Yeah, um, we started like a house on fire. Ironically enough, you beat us mm. second game of the season, we played really well. Uh, and then it kind of kick-started our, our run. We went on a good run after that. And a lot of the fans were obviously disappointed that we, we dropped points to you. But actually, mm. it didn't look a bad start because obviously you guys, I think you drew at Cardiff. And yeah. obviously, you'd done well the season before. So, um, yeah, it's it was a typical Cov game. We have that habit of having loads of chances and missing them. And then we give the team one or two chances and they take them. And it's kind of been the story the last couple of weeks that we've thrown away points and kind of just had opportunities and not really taken them. Mm-hmm. Classic example was Tuesday night against Cardiff. I think Cardiff had four chances and scored two absolute screamers. We had three or four chances and the keepers made one save of note in the game. So, yeah, we, we've it, Rob, Mike Robbins, obviously you guys had him quite going back a yeah. while ago. Um yeah. He's a good manager. I think he frustrates the fan base a little bit. Um, I think he's very set in his ways um, um, on it. But you can't knock his knock what he's done. Mm. It's just once you go top of the league, like last season, you guys had the experience of the playoffs. You raised you raised the bar. Yeah. Unfortunately, really, clubs like Coventry and, and Barnes without substantial investment, the only way really is is down after you've probably mm. hit the max you can achieve. So, yeah, yeah it's um. I think it's going to be, I just hate it for it to be an if-only season. And I think that's going to be mm. the way it's going to go, unfortunately. But we've got hope you guys were quite a bit, still a bit off the playoffs last season and you went on a storming run. Mm. So there's there's hope, but really we, we need to win on Saturday and probably win the next two games after that to have any sniff of it. Yeah, I mean, like you just said, we're going back to, I mean, going back since ages ago, like now, I've done it back in August when, we, we, you know, you came to Oakwell. And to be fair, a fair few fans were saying that we were lucky to come away with three points. It could have been a draw because uh, we felt that Coventry was starting to come into it. And like you just touched on here with Mark Robbins, we know about Mark Robbins because what he did at Barnsley and what he achieved. And when you haven't got a massive transfer budget to work with, he did well with the players where he got to uh, work with them and bring the best out in them. Uh, very, what what I found in my experience with Mark Robbins is that he was very opinionated. He was very, like you said, he, was, he knew what he wanted to do and he wasn't really going to deviate from it no matter what. So a bit of a split choice here as well um, back in Barnsley. But then again, when you look and see what he's done, I mean, going back to like uh, your ground uh, issues and that, which is, you know, he like stayed all the way through here. And I'm thinking, is he going to go? Is he, go- is he still going to stay at Coventry? And if, for a bit of me thinking, oh, he's going to go. He's got, and he wanted, you know, and I'm glad that you're back in, you know, you, you stayed in because I think any other fan, when you're looking at outside in, you, do, you don't want to, to happen like that. You know what I mean? It's like such as your buddies when they're going to administration and, you know, teams like that, you derby counties and, you, you look at clubs like that and you always feel for fans uh, like for, for such as you are. You, you all go week in, week out. And that's what I appreciate is that the fan base is still loyal and still stays here. So, um, like you said, we, we last season, we went on an unbelievable run and we went into playoffs. And, you, you know, you in 12, like 12 months, look where we are now, kind of thing. Massive, massive change for us. We lost as manager. Lost his captain, the CEO went his backroom staff went and we're starting like a rebuild job yet again. Um, and I don't know what what y'all were like in uh, transfer window back in August and then January. But did you did you feel that you recruited well, or do you think there was still room for improvements that you could have recruited better, uh, Glenn? I think we did all right in August. We took a bit of a punt on Bright and Abakari, and that spectacularly backfired. We kind of put our eggs in that basket that he was going to be the backup for 
Callum O'Hare, which I think you guys have put mm. Oakwell mm. kicked lumps out of him. I think, you, <laughs> I think yeah. to the yellow card you got, which, which, is not, which is not Barnsley alone. It is pretty much most teams. Mm. It's find the different ways you can foul Callum O'Hare um, mm. on it. Um, so, yeah, I think we, we did a good business. Obviously, we got Victor Jokerez in permanently. That, that yeah. obviously looks a, a massive massively good move now um he went on a good bit a good run of form he's kind of hit a bit of form again mm. um and then unfortunately he, he he missed well i say he missed a chance he had a good chance against uh against southampton away to make it 2-2 uh then he's had a good chance again uh against um cardiff on tuesday night which he headed against the keeper so yeah we've done well obviously um we had tyler walker um, who played against you guys and then got injured and he's kind yeah. of been in and out. We, we've had Matty Godden with injury problems, Waggon. So we're probably lacking a striker uh, and we probably could have got a number 10 in, in in January to invest. Obviously, last season we took, I say we took Matty James off you. Obviously, his loan yeah. ended with you guys. We took him and he made a massive difference. We got Jokerez yeah. in and that uh, kind of give us a little bit of a fill it we went on a really really good run of form at the end end of season obviously we, i think we beat you guys at home to two nil with two crack i think dom Iron scored a cracking goal yeah. and he, he seems to always love to score against you yeah he's just he's not prolific um against you guys um actually i think luke thomas i think luke thomas might have scored his first away goal against mm. you guys and mm. we have players that just look brilliant but it's just the end product mm. yeah i think we did all right in in August, January, we moved a lot of dead wood on. Mm. But if you do that, obviously, we've got Jake Bidwell in, who's proven championship. He's been yeah. in the playoffs for the last two seasons with Swansea. We moved a lot of dead wood on. But if you do that, you've got to give the fringe players or the youngsters a chance. And at the moment, we've got major holes in our midfield and up mm. the strike force. And Mark Robbins simply won't give the younger talent a chance. We've got a young lad in the under... 23 is Ryan Howley, who's been playing really well. We've got Fabio Tavares, who's been playing very well. I think we played your under 23s recently and and beat yeah. you. Yeah. And we played your under 18s and were top of the league, and your under 18 spanked us 5 0. And mm. we're apparently one of the best sides we've played. So we've got definitely young talent because we we've we've always brought it through. But um I just don't get the reluctance to give people a chance like Cardiff mm. have done. Cardiff's mm. team on Tuesday night had four or five kids in who played under twenty foot under twenty three football against our under twenty three side mm. last April, and they, we beat them six one. And then four of them have gone on to play first team football, and they hadn't played that mm. much first team football at that point. So yeah, that's where Robbins is a bit stubborn. And I think he's kind of doing it to prove a point, maybe about we yeah. to get more money in the summer. But like you guys have shown. It's all right saying, oh, well, there's always next season. You don't know what's going to happen in the summer. And that's the problem. There's a lot of our fan base saying, oh, look what we've done. We've overachieved. Mm. But it might be the only opportunity we get. And yeah. like Leicester City, they they had that one opportunity and they took it. There's no guarantee that they'll ever get another opportunity of winning the mm. league again. And that's the frustration. I think we've just we've missed we've missed a massive opportunity um, on it. So, yeah. That's, that's that's where we're at at the moment. Unfortunately, it's a lengthy debate. <laughs> no, it, it's like what you said about Matty James. Which is a good point because uh, we're going to get round to like obviously players what made a difference. And for us, Matty James, what I believe, he only came in for. I wanted him to be there for a full campaign, but he came for a six month loan period. But I believe that when Matty James came in, it allowed Alex Smallwood, our captain, to express himself more. And when he went, he it left a bit of a void because. Alex Mowat was his captain, but we had to bring in a young player, Ramal Palmer. And we went through a bit of a wobble and it was, are we going to make playoffs? Are we not? And I just, I, I for me personally, I know obviously it, was, it might have been down to wages and what he was earning. But if you look at bigger picture, it's like we might only have this one bite cherry for how many years? I mean, look at this season. So to say that we got in playoffs... Um, and we were like two, you know, 180 minutes away from potential promised land at Premier League. I, you've got to, for me, like as a fan, look at bigger picture and say, just look at the money from the TV revenue that you might have got. You know, could we have gone that bit further? But it's all if it's put some mebbies. And it's like what you said, Via, uh, like Cardiff and such as us, we're pretty light in midfield and other departments as well. But 
we seem to be putting young players in and that's what we want to do, promote you, which I'm all for that. But there's times that I want to see a bit of experience and a bit of, not like a, a old old player as such, but someone who's been in championship who knows the league and knows what it takes to win games. I mean, you know as well as I do, championships more or less getting harder and harder. It's like a Premier League 2 kind of thing, you know what I mean? It's so many big clubs fighting to get out for, for money. For me, our transfer window was, to be honest, I was I was going to say it was pretty poor, but it was two loan signings what came in, Dominic Squeener um, and Beres. And for me, they've come in and that actually made a difference. And I have one of people to hold my hands up and say, he's not going to make it because it was like last day of season, uh, last day of transfer window. But they've come on uh, Bassey and uh, Queener, and you can tell they're that bit of different. That bit different. I would personally still like to have seen uh, someone in midfield to beef it up a bit and maybe another striker because Macaulay Woodrow is going to be out for Aprilish. So it'd be like we're now relying on Carlton Morris, who we, you know, we played against Coventry and then he got picked up an injury if anyone out. So it's like swings and roundabouts. And like I say, you never know what's going to happen next season. So for, for this, well, up to now, I mean, I'm just looking at the table, you're 12th. And like your form's been lost, win, lost, draw, win. So it's a bit inconsistent. Yeah. But having said that, what's what's been players what have made a standout for you this season up to now? Who should who should we as Barnes be keeping an eye out thinking this could be a potential game winner for, for your tomorrow? I think the signing of the season has to be Simon Moore for us. Um, mm. Hopefully he's not busy against you guys, but I think he's been a great signing. Yeah. Uh, to pick him up on a free transfer, the guy is his quality. Oh, I don't think transfer. That, right. Yeah, from Sheffield United. I don't think there's many goalkeepers. I mean, I've seen a few of the other podcasts say about the lad at Bournemouth's brilliant. Mm. And I think the guy you've got, Brad Collins, yeah. um, I think he's, he's the, the numbers he does, he looked really good. Mm. I think the lad at Huddersfield, Nichols, yeah. has done obviously really well. Um, and I'd throw Simon Moore into that mix. But yeah, I think uh, Simon Moore definitely been probably one of our best signings. Um, Callum O'Hare, if he mm. could score, mm. he'd be brilliant and he yeah. wouldn't be playing for us. Um, it's just the, the final end product. Um, he hits the keeper, he makes the wrong decisions. Mm-hmm. Tuesday night's the classic example. He's gone through in a challenge, dived, got up, gone and won the ball off the keeper. Keeper's cleaned him out and the rest thought he's dived again. Yeah. Um, probably the other player, but he probably won't play is Matty Godden because he's had um, a burst appendix. He's been probably our standout performer. Normally, when him and Victor score, we don't lose games. So mm. when one of them score, we tend to get a result on it. Um, and probably the final player, obviously from Sheffield, is Carl McFadzine, who's been brilliant this season. But he's kind of dropped out the team recently. Um, but I think he'll come back in and start against you guys. Um, mm. He's up there in nearly one of our top scorers um, before Godden went on his purple patch. So, yeah, he scored about three goals. Mm. Leader, he, He's improved massively from last season where he was a bit of a liability at times. But, yeah, uh, I would probably say them. The other one would be Gustavo Hamer, but he's banned mm. because he uh, picks up yellow cards like confetti. <laughs> so, and yeah, you be it is. <laughs> well, I think he's the only player that I could see who may well, get a fr- uh, may well miss six games of a season wow. due to yellow cards. Without wow. picking a red card up because he's he's on he's on I think he's on ten now and if he hits the is it thirteen or I can't remember how on any or it's thirteen or oh it's fifteen if he hits fifteen he gets a free game ban and we've got wow. seventeen odd games left uh, so still plenty left. of time isn't it man he'll <laughs> do it he's just it's just silly it's just silly yeah. silly yellow cards it's probably similar to Mowat like you you've seen Mowat he yeah. dives into stupid tackles that he, yeah. he doesn't need to make yeah. with you guys um so yeah it's just a frustration because his class when he's on form you haven't seen a better passer mm. in the in the championship some of the stuff he does is brilliant but then some of the stuff he, you pull your hair out at him yeah. and just go what are you doing you've got so much talent and you just fluff a fluff a chance when you're unmarked in the box and as a fan he's so frustrating isn't it yeah he's, he's brilliant he loved the fan base love him but yeah 
he's a typical player with South American flair, and you think mm. you've you've got to learn. And I yeah. thought he'd learned his lesson, but mm. he, he hasn't. He's got, <laughs> he got even with the fans being in the ground, he, he almost <laughs> plays up to it. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's, um, it. he's brilliant. But yeah, I'd say probably those would be the would be the standout. My my personal favourite, I, who I who I really like, um, is Todd Kane. I think he's come in yeah. and done well. But he's another. He's got an injury and he's been, he's not been off on form. But he's a his assist record for us is brilliant. The amount of goals we score from his crosses and the created chances. And for someone who came with a lot of baggage mm-hmm. and came came in as we don't really want him. Oh, he's a bit of he's a bit of a, a, a character and he'd be a bad influence in the dressing room. Yada yada. He's totally proved it wrong. He's been brilliant, and I think the only reason his form's tailed off is say he's playing with a. A M- MCL injury, which he shouldn't really be playing for, but we ain't got to fit right mm. back at the club, so he's got to play. But no, he, he's definitely someone who I think could get forward if if he plays on Saturday, because um, I think Dabo's back fit. But I don't want him to rush Dabo back because yeah. he has a habit of breaking down, and he's someone we we who's been a key part of our success. But he's kind of had a dip in form, much like the whole team has. We just we started too well. We haven't got the strength and depth. We tailed off. We've kind of resurged, but we have the ability in us to throw a game in like Tuesday night. And mm. if you wanted to bet on Carve, if there's a team who are on a bad run, you but you bet you're good to play us because we'll screw up. We nearly threw it threw it away at Reading. That's yeah. the worst we played and we somehow won three two. And I d and I think it's only because Reading decided to press yeah. the red self destruct button on it. <laughs> so we did you guys a favour because we get Reading in Reading in Yeah, touch, that's really. it. Yeah, he did us a favour. Yeah, yeah, he did us a favour. We need a few more actually, so plenty of time to go. Uh, for Barnsley, um, I said Brad Collins. I think he's, I think he's done the most saves in uh, Championship. I think it was 101, 102 saves. So that's is a lot, and I think it's that like shows in position where we are in the league. You know, he's been called, been, you know, been called upon lately. I know for the last couple of games he's been questioned because he's made a few rash decisions. But I think because you're always like last man so to speak you're always under the spotlight so i always look at it and think yeah but look at how many points he saves of a season you know so i think a lot of confidence has drained out its side and obviously we lost ishmael so shop came in then ashbarger came in and such as like your your callum styles your britain you know they've like lost well, i'm gonna say belief but like lost confidence they don't seem to be the same players like last season which is unfortunate because, you know, I know Callum Styles has been played out at left and he's been brought into midfield. Now, Callum Styles seems to be playing behind the, the attack and just in front of midfield to try and link it up, which is kind of sorting. But I think it helped out when uh, Bassey came in and Queener. They made a difference, you know, again, uh, playing back three up front system. And we got his first win, which were like, we party poppers and everything. But... It, it's it was great to see, and it was good to see for players as well because you could see, you know, when Collie would draw before he picked up his injury, he was getting frustrated. He was wanting, you know, yeah, captaincy, but we were taking free kicks and corners and penalties and doing everything apart from like cut grass, I think, on pitch. And all I wanted to do is like just go and score a goal, you know, just go out and play a game. But I think with that much pressure on him, his game was suffering, and now he's that injured, which. You know, I know the links going around with, him with West Brom at time before he picked up his injury, whether he'd have gone or not, I don't know, in January. But it's going to be late, like April. But like I said, we, Carl Morris, had been out injured against, when he picked up injury against Coventry at the beginning of the season, but he'd been out with a few other issues with COVID related things. Now he's coming into it, he's actually been one of his, you know, more vocal players. Uh, even when he were on bench, I think he came back from an injury. He were on bench, and it was an injury happened to one of the Cardiff players after about ten minutes. And he come part at dugout off at bench, having a not a pop, but we were telling Devante a call, run based on. And I'm thinking, you're on bench, but he's still passionate about wanting to yeah. do it, and that's what I want to see. I'm thinking, get him on, get him on pitch, like. But uh, Carlton Morris, another good player, Queener, um, it looks. Decent, uh, nice turn, uh, nice touch at ball. You can tell he's come from a bit better class of uh, setup yeah. as in Watford. Why he won't get in games at Fulham? I think he only played four games at Fulham, where a, a 
just because his short standards are full of him. But he's coming via, played really well. For me, I'd say if he starts, which I'm hoping he does start, I'm, I'm hoping he doesn't change it much from, you know, last week when we won. I'm hoping he more or less keeps the same personnel and the same system. I think Carlton Morris will be a bit of a danger if he's, if he's allowed to play where he wants to play. Keep it as it is, because we've got, I'm going to go into it like formation. He's got a tendency to play three at back, five in midfield, then a two and a one, or a, he always likes to play that kind of system. Uh, Jordan Williams, he played at centre back, and to be fair, one of the best games I've ever seen him play. Uh, I know he's a right back, but he's been played at left back. But he came in central defence, and I thought he was one of the most solid performances I've ever seen him in a red shirt, to be fair. And to say, well, you know, his first win, and I, that's what I'm wanting to happen, is to like not alter it just because Kitchen might be back or, you know, Callum Britton might be back. Is like, don't upset it too much. Try and keep them players there so they can build on that confidence and that understanding. And like I said, we've got a weight Coventry, we haven't been there for like 90 or GAV. You know, we don't want to be like thinking about it too much. I know we've got, he's, he's got his first winning league, like Poyer Spargy. I just wanted to like keep it consistent and just like don't alter it too much. Uh, so obviously coming back to commentary is what, what system are you all playing? Do you think he'll, does he alter it much as in the opposition or does he more or less stay the same? It's pretty much, he's, he's been flitting obviously from basically the promotion season. We kind of had no fit strikers. Um, mm. So we literally just had Bakayoko as our fit striker and he went to this box formation where we had two midfielders playing behind the striker, went to wing backs and we've kind of stayed with that. And then we've kind of flitted between three at the back, four in midfield, one one behind a front two or one or two behind a single striker. Obviously, mm. with the fact we've had massive injuries up front and we let yeah. Tyler, Tyler Walker go on loan and Sodge Law is the day later. Matty, Matty Godden does his appendix mm. and then Martin Waggon decides to pick an injury up in training, as it is always the case. And then we're like, damn, we're mm. screwed on it. Um, and we've done the same thing with our right-backs. We've loaned two of our right-backs out and then we've got three right backs injured or coming injuries yeah. which is brilliant um so yeah he, he pretty much sticks with that I, I would hope he will go to up front and have a go at you guys hmm. um personally I, I just want to see a bit more attacking intent we rotated on tuesday and it spectacularly didn't work yeah but then i saw there was a lot of teams in championship made changes um and it didn't work on them uh, I think Hull were the only team who didn't change the make changes and they got a point at Sheffield United. So I think mm. he'll stick with three at the back, four in, uh, I think he'll be four in midfield and I think he'll probably play two behind Victor Jokeres, but I'll be doing my usual Mark Robbins scratch yeah. my head and what's he doing. <laughs> and not, nine times out of ten, he... It's, he normally proves us wrong. He does yeah. some stuff and, you, and he'll prove us wrong. And he's quite stubborn, mm. as I said. But I think you've got to, I said, you've got to question it sometimes. But that's your prerogative oh, yeah. as a fan. I'm yeah, sure Ismail did, Ismail did stuff last season and, and fans queried him yeah. uh, on it. So, um, yeah, I think you, I think it's just a case of who he plays where. We've obviously got two left wing backs um, he, and he, it's a toss up between them. And then who he plays alongside Callum O'Hare. Is a bit of a mystery um, behind Jokeres because he's got three or four different options, but none of them have really stood up and said, you know what, the play the shirt's mine, or I'm going to nail it. Mm. So I would rather give Waggon a run um, and and play and reunite the two up front, which were pretty much the basis of our good runner form um, on it. So I think we just look back side with two, two up front. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens. Good point about what you were saying about Robbins and Ishmael is that. Um, I know obviously with COVID we didn't see much at games but we watched it on like iFollow and stuff like that and even when we were doing fan cams or, and you know match after thoughts and stuff on uh, Tykes TV it was you might have watched it and it was a scrappy one note and you were thinking what's he doing he's playing this direct system but we've got a want we've got a big chart in it so you kind of like why is he doing this why is he taking uh, an attacker off and beefing up in midfield and what He's, he's playing long ball. Why is he playing at corners? But when he comes out with a 1 0 away somewhere, and it's like, well, do you know what? It won't great football games, but it were three points. And 
it's it's a results business, isn't it? You know, it's like we we, we just got it. So you you kind of scratch your head and like what you said, but that's his way of playing, and nobody's going to do him any difference. It, it, it's his own man. That's what he's going to do. It's like, yeah, fair enough. Can't complain. We've got we've got to win. We've got to win. Um, so that brings us on for let us know your thoughts for all fans and people what are watching um, in comments below. I'm going for score prediction. <sighs> I can't see us winning because we haven't won there for nine odd year. Me out saying I'm gonna I take a one nil win Barnsley, obviously I'm gonna say that. But I've just got a feeling I've, I just think it's gonna be a draw. I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be one apiece. I, I don't know. I, I think that we on that win, I think his confidence might be a bit up there, but like such as at Coventry, you'll be wanting a win and all to you know keep keep your season uh, going. Uh, so my heart says one nil Barnsley, but realistic nil saying one apiece. Uh, that's what I'm going for anyway. So, Len, over to you, mate. Uh, we have a phrase that I've used a bit that we cover it up, um, and we we're talking to um, another Barnsley channel like yesterday, and I said we could win three or four nil because mm. we have been creating loads of chances, and unfortunately, some team is going to get a spanking off us. Yeah, but then. The realist in me looks at Tuesday night against Cardiff and the chances have kind of dry, dried up a bit. Mm. So I've just take a one nil. I don't care how it happens. If it's the 89th minute, if it's an own goal, if you keep yeah. it, drops a clangor, I'm not really bothered. We, we need a win. Uh, mm. We've got, we're too much that we're, oh, we're a good side to play or cover a great side to play good football. I don't want to be liked. I want to be winners. And, yeah. and that's the thing. And I, I think that's where there's a lot of, Anger, so yeah. Um, Head says if we play as well as we can do, we could score a few. Heart says, I know what Carf and they know how to disappoint <laughs> me, and I think it, I think it'll be one 0 But I could easily see a draw. We've drew with Blues at home. We drew with Derby at home. We mm. were lucky to beat Reading at home. The only team out the bottom three we've convincingly beaten at home was Peterborough, and that mm. was because they just decided to have ten minutes where they press the self-destruct button so i'll be grateful if barnsley will press the, press the self-destruct button <laughs> because, we all, because i don't really like doing 90th minute winners and late drama again no. because it's not particularly good for your heart rate or your blood pressure which the amount of game no, where we've either, if we, where we've had late winners or we've had chances late on and then we've missed them and you just kick yourself so um but yeah it's just I hope for a good referee and a good game of football yeah. that's at the moment and that's two things i mean we've had decent mm. games of football but the lack of good referees at championship referees. levels is another story. So I just want a decent game of football. And I say, generally think Barnes is a, a good club and I wish them all the best to stay up. Because I think, as I said, it's a warning to other teams this season that you you don't you know what's going to happen. You and Swansea yeah. got the playoffs and look where you are. Now you've had massive overheave, 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 evil, if that's the word yeah. on it. So, yeah. I think it'll be yeah. a good game as long as it's on and the weather improves. Because, well, mind you, saying that the sun's come out now, but it was chucking it down with rain and <laughs> blowing the gale earlier. So, hopefully, it's on and um, it's a good game of football. And may the best side win. Appreciate it. And like I said, for fans, what are going? Please be safe and that when you're traveling because the conditions. It's not ideal, is it? But uh, yeah, just hope and I fully get where you're coming from, and probably a lot of. Uh, fans as well will on about refereeing is like there's been some very very questionable decisions and stuff so like I say you're just wanting a, a good game a good referee and just to keep you know that's all that's what us as fans want to be talking about we want to be talking about game we don't want to be talking about dodgy referee or linesman decisions it's you know it's all about football we'll talk about teams and not about uh, referees but I think it's and it's interesting to hear what you all say as well it's like we well, just think we get them at all well but it's <laughs> when when Coventry think, City fans come on everywhere. and raise it same. <laughs> I think they're everywhere and you just look sometimes and think what what the what yeah. the and even I've seen it in games as a cough fan and I'm thinking yeah that's that's a, a cough fan's done a foul there and he's not pulled it up and I'm like yeah. you just think bizarre it's it's just bizarre yeah. what, what you what you don't get see you don't see anymore on it it's just yeah it's it's, it's a, a law unto themselves unfortunately very true, very true. So I want to thank everybody for uh, tuning in. Uh, please let, uh, leave likes, comments, and let us know your thoughts uh, at Score Predictions below. I want to thank 
like uh, Glenn for coming on from Sky Pool Fans TV. Please check them out. They're on Twitter and every, all social medias. Very, very good, knowledgeable people. We've got podcasts and that as well. I urge you to listen to them. Uh, very good listen. Uh, I listened to it my son, last night when I was at work and I listened to it again uh, this morning as well. Uh, great football content and that. So, Glenn, I want to appreciate you for joining me on Tykes TV, mate. No worries. And all the best for the rest of the season after Saturday, of course. Cheers, I appreciate it. So everybody watching, thanks a lot. One thing left to say, you Reds.